Welcome to the Blitz. Let's begin with a first-time rivalry. Goddard, Eisenhower, and Goddard. And the students letting it all hang out in this one, even if the temps are under 40 degrees. And the hits, oh, they were hard. They feel 10 times worse in this weather, by the way. Tigers up 10-zip. Late second half, Goddard threatening. Colin Neville calling his number. Scrambles 10 yards for the Lions. First score, 10-7. End of the half, Blake Ramey for Eisenhower. Looking for a score before the break, but Leslie Moreau uh, would have none of that with the interception for Goddard. How about the Lions? Halftime adjustments, they outscore Eisenhower big in the second half. They win 27-17. Hey, let's get blitzed. Right. The Kick Sports Friday Football Blitz, presented by Pugate Enterprises, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. All right, welcome to Friday Football Blitz, delivered by Pizza Hut and served by Taco Bell. I'm Chris Fry. All right, final night of the regular season with the playoffs beginning next week. And in tonight's big game, no playoff berths on the line, just a district championship. Derby and Heist, these two have played in some crazy contests with some fantastic finishes in the past. You can add another chapter to their saga tonight. Shane Ewing, he has more with the Panthers and Falcons in our big game. Let's be honest, on this freezing cold night, nothing is pretty. Every yard in these football games is a complete grind for these teams. But all throughout this season, we were looking forward to Heist and Derby in the final week for a district championship, and we got more than we bargained for. Out at Heist High School, there's Dancing Zombies and DeAndre Goolsbees tonight as the Derby Panthers lurk in the first quarter. Kellen Sims across the middle with the touchdown. It was 8 to nothing after a derby safety, and then it's 15 to nothing once Chandler Shant dives in, and that is ruled a touchdown. But Heist answers back. Their junior quarterback, Forlanda Parker, right up the middle for 27 yards, and it's a touchdown. They're down just 8, and then in the fourth quarter, Chris Reed, the former quarterback, who's now a wideout, catches the long bomb and Heist would tie it up on a two-point conversion. It's 15-15, and Heist has a chance to win, but the long pass is picked off by Derby, so we go to overtime. In overtime, it's Chris Reed in the out route there, and he would actually lose the ball. The fumble goes back to Derby, and they end the game with Chance diving in, making it 21-15 in overtime. That is your final Derby, your district champion. I don't know. Uh, as a coach, it looks like we took a step backwards. They're just watching X's and O's. But uh, I'm proud of these guys. They played hard. And we asked for 100% effort all the time, and, and that's what they gave us. So they did a good job. I think it just says we got a lot of heart. You know, we never gave up. Uh, there's a lot of times where our kids could have their heads down the whole time, you know, people making mistakes. But they uh, kept their heads up and uh, stayed in the game and uh, pulled up the win. Once again, 21-15, your final derby finishes 8-1, and one, and they secure home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs. Heights will have to start on the road, but at least these two teams are in the postseason. 21-15, and from Heights High School, Shane Ewing, Kick Sports. All right, staying in Class 6A, District 8 now. The 75th meeting of the Hatchet Game, Dodge City, Garden City. Red Demons on the board first, Parker Davis. Quarterback keeper, 5 yards, 7 to zip, thanks to Red Demon TV for this video. How about Garden City answering the bell? Brady Bean, we're tied at seven. After a dodge pick six, they're up 24-14 second half. Garden final rally. Grayson Temple to Brad Swick. 45 yards. Cuts the deficit to 24-20. That would be your final. How about this? Dodge goes to the playoffs on this win based on points. The other game in District 8, Mays hosting Hutchinson. We start on the opening drive. Trevor Turner Keeps the ball himself, ball talks up 7-zip. Mays gets on the board as Connor Ludwig locked and loaded to Jordan Schultz. We are tied at 7, Mays is in this one. Hutch's next possession, Turner. Wide open, Jamison likes in the end zone. Ran, Randy Dryling passing the ball, but going back to his old bread and butter to Colby Turner. Hutch up 21-7 after that. Mays would cut into that deficit, but all Hutchinson tonight, 42 14, Hutch, once again in the playoffs, this time in Class 6A. On the television tonight, Salina South and Great Bend. South up 14-zip, looking for more, some trickeration. Zach Nackbar bombs it to Aaron Marr, 
and he pulls a couple of defenders inside the 10. They would score on the next play, 21 zip. Great Ben finally getting on the board with Joshua Lopez, three yards out, 21-7 at that point. Salina South all over Great Ben. Big road win. They win 56-21. Coming up, more highlights on the Blitz. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Friday Football Blitz, delivered by Pizza Hut and served by Taco Bell. All right, we're going to stay in Class 5A, District 5. Emporia already has the number one seed sewn up. And over Newton. That winner would decide who would finish second. Third quarter, the Railers with the halfback pass, Jared Langley. Up top, Dylan Moore. First down, Railers knocking on the door. A few plays later, Derek Garnica pounds it up the middle. Newton down 27-13. They're rallying, folks. Coleman Kingsley with the fake. And uh, to the running back, he keeps it himself. Newton finding themselves only down six. Andover, however, would win by three and a tight one. 30-27. Get this. Trojan back in the playoffs for the first time since 2005. Congratulations to Mike Lee and company. All right, staying in this district. Capen hosting Andover Central. The Crusaders. They pretty much had this one wrapped up, but Andover Central came to play, not before Nick Hyland for KMC. Up the middle, in scoring position, Hyland would, Hyland would punch it in for six. Crusaders up seven zip. AC, Blake Meyer, goes to Cameron Hurley for the touchdown. Game tied at seven. Crusaders, as I mentioned, they needed a win tonight to make the postseason. Instead, a 21-7 loss to the Jags puts them out. Andover Central is in. District play can be so cool. Bishop Carroll looking to end the year undefeated, taking on the Liberal. First quarter, first possession for the Golden Eagles. Denzel Goolsby looking good on this one on the trap left side. And look at the young man weave through traffic, 45 yards for 6-7 nothing. BC's next possession, Jalen Hernandez. Boy, Carroll has some uh, running backs by committee. And watch this step on for good measure. Vicious. Inside the 10, Hernandez would score on the next play. Redskins getting on the board late in the first quarter. Britton Abbott finding J.J. Lewis. Got all bite. But Carroll offering the only fireworks of the night. They win 49 to stay, uh, 49 to 6. Finally, East and Southeast playing for pride over at Carpenter Stadium. Third quarter, Blue Aces punting, but Southeast special teams hard at work. Dominique Kelly getting his big paw in there for the block. Brady Burleson scoops it up and takes it down inside the 10. Or two plays later, Abel Kecky calls his own number for the score. But East, they grab the win 20 to 12. Blue Aces finishes the year at five and four and how about a big congratulations to north high school the redskins on a coming into their contest tonight against campus they've uh, basically scored 40 points all season tonight they score 42 points on campus and a 42 27 win they make the playoffs despite a three-way tie for one and two in their district congratulations to the redskins more on the blitz next time